So now let's talk about the MongoDB cluster. Uh, so as we mentioned uh, from the cloud database uh, of AWS, that um, on MongoDB, we can also build a cluster of the databases. So cluster gave us um, redundant um, servers or instances so that we can make sure that if uh, one server failed, and we can have the, our second uh, backup server that uh, will come in to uh, take control of all to handle all the data transactions. So in MongoDB, we have the similar structure uh, where you can see here uh, we have the MongoD. So MongoD is a main daemon that uh, process for MongoDB. So that is used to handle the request uh, and also to handle saving data, persist data or you can also can handle write data to the disk. Okay, so that is MongoD. And we can have a replica set. Okay, so it basically is a group of MongoD. Okay, so basically it is a group of MongoD uh, where we have our primary node and also we have the secondary node. So this is a very similar to the AWS RDS, where you can have a primary instance and also you have multiple secondary instance. So the way that MongoDB cluster is working is that, so when you want, the user want to read or write data into the database, so they will connect directly to the primary node. Okay, so primary node will receive uh, the request from the client and in the meantime, it will also uh, replica, replica the data to those secondary nodes. Okay, so for in, in this case, we have uh, one uh, primary node. We can only have one primary node. And we have two secondary nodes. Uh, of course, you can have multiple uh, second, secondary nodes. Uh, so that the data, will, uh, the data will be sent out to those secondary nodes as well. However, in most scenarios that the user can only write data into primary node and can read data into a primary node. Uh, in some cases, uh, the user can also read data from the read data from the secondary node. So for example, uh, if you have too many reads and also the primary node is overloaded and you, you can allow the user to read data from a secondary node as well. However, so you have to be cautious that in that case, you know that when the data just, for example, when the data just inserted into the primary node, it will take time that to be um, synchronized to the secondary node. So that means that when you read from the secondary node, you may not read the most updated data set. Okay, uh, so that's the primary node and our secondary node. And those nodes always talk with each other. So if the, for some reason the primary node failed, okay, and the one of those second node will become the primary node. So it will receive all the requests. So all the requests will be actually directed to, the, to this new primary node. And you may well receive an alert, say, okay, so something going wrong with this uh, node. So you can double check, see what's happened with that one and you can restore this one later. So however, so your transactions uh, will not be interrupted because you will have a secondary node that will um, be, that will serve as primary node once the primary node failed. Okay, so that is a cluster, a MongoDB cluster. And also we just mentioned earlier that uh, MongoDB and also NoSQL database can be scaled vertically. So what does that mean? So that means that uh, the vertical scaling is achieved by this sharded cluster. Okay. Oh, sorry. Horizontal scaling. So horizontal scaling can be achieved by this sharded cluster. So MongoDB uh, supports the horizontal scaling. Okay. So first, let's see what is vertical scaling. So vertical scaling is like most uh, relational database, RD. Uh, MS relational database management. So they are using vertical scaling. So that means 
when you when you have more data, when you want to handle more data and you have to want more CPU RAM disks, you have to update the server so from a cheaper one to a more expensive one. So the cost is normally very expensive because we know that a computer that has like say one gigabyte RAM and also a computer has a two gigabyte RAM. So in most cases, the price is not doubled. So pro probably the price is tripled. Something uh, okay. So so this one is is far way more expensive than this one. Okay. Uh, so that's why we introduce this horizontal scaling. So horizontal scaling is what um, the sharded cluster has been uh, implemented. So the basic idea is that we divide data into multiple places. Okay, and we distribute those places all across many shards. Okay, across many shards. Uh, so for example, here we have a very, very big uh, data set. Okay, um, so we can divide this data set into three shards. Okay, so the shard one and the shard two. Okay, and also the shard three. Okay, so each shard will contain only part of the original data set. Okay, and why we can do that? That is because um, we're using the non-relational database has a very flexible data structure. So that is a major reason that we can make it possible to short the data set. Okay. Um, so normally we will have Mongo S. Uh, we also need to define a short key. So that key is, is the one that is indexed. And also that is a key that it define, determine that which part of data go to which part. So for example, uh, if you have a data set that talking about, let's say, um, uh, professor names, okay, P names. And if you are using that as a short key, and you can see P name from A uh, to S will go to short one. And also P name that, okay, um, P name from T, to Z, okay, we'll go to short two. Okay, so that is one example that we can use the professor name and the short as a short key. Well, it they may not be the best practice of using names because the names are not distributed evenly. So we may have more names that within this category, and we may have fewer names that within this category. So uh, choosing the right short key is uh, very, very important. So you don't want to have one shard that is very big, and also you have another shard that is contains small amount of data. So ideally, we want each shard has relatively the same amount of the data. Okay, so that is shard key. And each shard is actually a replica set. Okay, um, and we use MongoDB use MongoS to accept queries from the client and the MongoS will figure out which shard will receive the queries. So again, so we have a MongoS that will re receive all the queries. And for example, if the query is searching professor at name starting within uh, that follow with A to S, so the MongoS will, okay, so the shard A will handle this query. Uh, if another query is looking for professor whose name fall between T to letter Z, and Mongo as well, okay, short B will handle that query. So that you can see we can distribute, we can distribute the queries across multiple shards. And then within each shard, it is a replica set. So that means we still have a primary node and we have a multiple secondary node, okay? So the data is also, uh, synchronized and also backup replicated uh, across different uh, nodes.